Hey everybody, Shark Scrapper, whoa. First of all, I'm not gonna tell you what this is. I'm gonna let you all guess what this is. So you can put your comments down in the, uh, down in the comments section below. But I am gonna introduce Chris from Prism Specialties. Chris, tell us what you do. So we're in the restoration industry and what we do is we take electronics out of homes or businesses and we bring them back to our facility and we restore them. We also do artwork as well as uh, textiles and uh, been doing this for roughly one and a half years and sometimes we come across some interesting stuff. So this is very cool. So there's another piece of it right over there. I have to come back for that because it does not want to fit in the shark mobile as you can see. Uh, that might give you some idea as to what it is that I have just picked up. This is going to be a lot of fun. You may have figured out what this is by now. It is one big mamma jamba, that's what it is. So, we're going to have to figure out our approach for this. My plan is to use the genie lift to get the power supply out. That's this thing here because that's really heavy. Uh, so we use the genie to get that. I might also, depending upon how I can maneuver it, I might do some scrapping right in the truck bed for that. And then this larger piece, we will break down what we can from inside the truck just to help reduce the weight. This was a two person lift, this part. There's a lot of aluminum here in with the steel, I, I believe. Um, so if all else fails, I can just shove it out of the shark mobile. Uh, but I would prefer to try to do it while it's in the shark mobile if I can, just for the elevation. All right, well, we're not gonna get it done by talking about it, so let's get her unstrapped and get to it. Man, I tell you what, <clears throat> that power supply is heavy. I can't wait to see what's inside there. All right, so we we tipped it over because it looked like all the screws were on this side and they are, so I should be able to get this access panel off now. And I'm guessing there's a bunch of transformers and things in there. Um, man, that looks like a whole line of capacitors, which makes a lot of sense because by now you figured out that this is a tanning bed, which meant that there were a whole bunch of fluorescent light tubes in here. And so this thing would be acting like the great the ballast, only on a much larger scale. All right, let's get at it. So, ballast, 400 watt ballast, one, two, three, four of those, 160 watt ballast, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, thirty-six of those. Yep, 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 okay. And one tiny little power board. <laughs> Oh, man. Now, the interesting thing is, will I be able to sell that as ballast? There's a closer look for y'all. So you can see the big 400 watt ballast. Then there's the 160 watt ballast running three rows of 13 of those. A bunch of wire and a bunch of capacitors. Now this tanning bed started the fire in this salon. I don't see any scorching or burn marks here. So it's hard to say where the, what started the fire, but uh, this was the guilty culprit somewhere. All right, I'm going to get the, this thing is really heavy and I'm pretty sure it's all those ballasts. 
So what I'm going to do is get those, you know, get everything out of here so that I can move this around. It's going to be a real pain if these screws don't want to help. each and every one of these man that's gonna suck so bad each one of these guys is really heavy and um, it's uh, I, I don't know if it's gonna go as ballast or if it's gonna go as a electric motor I'm gonna have to bust one of them open I guess and uh, see what we're dealing with uh, inside Go ahead and get one of the uh, little ones out too and see what that is. All right, each one of these is six pounds and there's four of them. So there's 24 pounds and they're copper windings. So they are essentially a copper bearing motor. So I'm gonna take them to my non-ferrous yard, let them look at them. Uh, they say ballast, but it's essentially a, a copper bearing motor. So my guess is they're gonna take them as motors. So there's uh, 24 pounds of those. And then these 160 watt ballasts are three pounds each. These are also copper aluminum, uh, excuse me, copper windings inside the housing. So again, a copper bearing motor, three pounds. There's 36 of these, if I counted correctly. So that's 108 pounds of motors there. And that explains why that thing is so heavy. It's all these ballasts, all these guys that are making it so heavy. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these guys out of here. Once I get the ballasts out, this will become a much easier thing to move around. There's 150 some odd pounds right there of weight in the ballasts. So we'll get those out of there. And there really isn't much else after that, but we'll take a look at each one of these boxes and see what those look like. Love that new fan. Moving some air around back here, keeping me more comfortable. I put a longer bit on this one. Oh, all right. Now, gotta get this plate off of this row and this row. Hopefully these cooperate. That other bit seemed to be doing better. Yeah, that other bit is doing much better. I may need a new bit for that drill. Go. 
So the capacitor can just stay on with the shred. But if you look down here, that's got a copper coil on it. That could probably go as a motor if I didn't want to bust off that coil. Let's go ahead and take it off of here, see what we're dealing with. For those of you who are fans of silver contacts, you would love these. So when I took this part off of the top, that came off. Then I unscrewed a, a clamp that was holding another piece down, which revealed what you see over here by my finger. When I take out this piece, you get this brass piece here, and you can see the silver contacts right there oops get off of there silver contacts right there and there and there and there so if you're really into the silver contacts these are some nice switches what i have to decide now is do i feel like busting these up or just chuck them in with my motors because with that coil there i'm sure they'll take these as motors yeah we'll see Let's see here now. We've got two screws there. Let's see what happens when I take those screws out. Well, this is just the gift that keeps on giving. So those two screws uh, let this piece fall right out. And there's your steel, and there's your copper, and there's more copper. So, and those screws came out really easy too. I was really surprised. So I might set those aside and uh, I... You're, you don't hear me say this word too often, but I might micro scrap these. Quick, go tell everybody you heard me say it. The shark scrapper said that word. That word that shall not be said. <laughs> All right, let's get back to that big mamma jamba. I think by now you get the idea that there's a lot of unscrewing that needs to be done. Does anybody want to watch me do that even in fast forward? Yeah, I don't think so. So come on, let's just get right past all of that. So we have a weird direction of rain today. It's, a, it's blowing into the shark cage. So I lowered the door down a little bit. I, I couldn't back in as far as I wanted to because I need to get this out of the back of the shark mobile. So we're getting a little rain inside the shark cage today. All right, now, it appears that inside these holes, there is a uh, screw holding this plate on. You can't see that because it's too far back in there. I can just barely make it out. So we're going to see if that holds true and we can get this end plate off.
we just pull on it and it comes out. Extruded aluminum, Sh oh, whoops, sheet aluminum. Extruded aluminum, extruded aluminum. And then I think that's ferrous again. I didn't put a magnet on it. Yeah, ferrous. And that's going to be ferrous. Yeah. So we have these pieces extruded, sheet, extruded, extruded, and then more ferrous. So we'll get these bolts off, get this stuff out of here, slide it out of the truck. We should be good to go here now. All right, now these big hinge mechanisms, they were held on by bolts. So I'm gonna use my 12 inch extender so that I can get the range to get at it straight. And then a pair of pliers to hold it from the other side. Uh, remember, if you see any of the tools that I'm using, most of that you need for your shop, most of them are on my Amazon shop. we go and yes if you buy something when you follow the Amazon link um, I get a little commission out of it and I use that to help put money towards our shark scrapper shark adoption project with the University of Miami a nut that's just a sheet metal screw somebody was doing some unauthorized repairs I think Okay, so we've got flipped, and uh, you can see here's the back end of the fluorescent connectors, some more fans in there, uh, and we got to get the other side unscrewed. But it'll be a lot easier to move it around now that I've got it flipped over like this. We still haven't found the obvious source of the fire. The guy told me that this was the bed that caused the fire, but I haven't found anything that looks like it was burned up. Some fans, there are some big fans on this thing too. There's some big fans on this thing too. We'll show you those. Uh, when I get those rounded up.
Now that we have it all broken down into the major elements, let's go ahead and weigh things up and see what we got from this beast. The aluminum extrusions added up to 29 pounds, and at 70 cents a pound, that's 20 bucks. Not as much sheet aluminum as I was expecting, only 8 pounds, and at 45 cents a pound, that's $3.60. Of all that wire, we only ended up with 5 pounds of insulated number 1, and I'm getting $2.15 a pound right now, so that's $10.75. We also got 15 pounds of number two insulated copper wire, so that's $12.15, and I think we may have found the culprit. Something caused this cable to overheat and start to melt down. Now, whether it actually went into fire or just created a lot of smoke, which anyone who's been around insulated copper wire, when it overheats and starts smoking out, you could very easily think that there was a fire. So yeah, I'm thinking this was the culprit. Copper bearing motors, I'm going to split this into two. We had the ballast was 160 pounds, and then the fans is 13 pounds. So total of 173 pounds, 33 cents a pound right now for copper bearing motors. So $57 and some change. We'll see what the yard decides they want to do with the ballasts. A lot of shred. So the power supply unit or the big transformer box, uh, that was 53 pounds of shred. And then the tanning bed itself, another 185 pounds. So 238 pounds of shred. Uh, if I take it to the yard, that'll pay me the best. That'll be 7.25 cents a pound. So $17.26. Well, all in all, we made about 121 bucks breaking this down into its constituent parts. If we had just sold it as straight scrap, we would have only made $34. So 121 bucks, and it was eh, three hours or so. I didn't run a timer on it. So, but you know what? I think it was worth it. I'd like to know what you think. Did you think it was worth the time to do this? Certainly it was worth it for the video. I mean, that itself was a lot of fun. But from a scrap business perspective, yeah, I think if I get any more tanning beds, I'll go ahead and break them down again. I've got a lot better understanding of how to get at them now, so that'll save me some time. And, uh, you know, there's just some good stuff there. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. The icons that are popping up are going to take you to more Shark Scrapper videos. And the round one in the middle is to help you subscribe. And you want to do that so you don't miss a single episode of The Shark Scrapper. Have a great day and watch out for those tanning beds. Man, they can light you up.